to youtubers i bet that after watching this video you will never struggle again with understanding the dots collision layer and mask concepts in this video we will explore the best possible examples problems and solutions to help you fully grasp how collision layers and mask work so without further delay let's get started let's take two objects um, let's call them nodes and these nodes contain collision layers and mask sections for simplicity let's remove the collision mask of the first node and the collision layer of the second node don't worry we will restore them in a minute now imagine we assign the fourth box as the collision layer of node a and second box of node x in the collision mask now will the both nodes collide and the answer is no before looking at the results let's understand how godot actually calculates collisions from these two layers and masks you can think of the collision mask as being projected on top of collision layer and if the assigned boxes match the collision will occur that's it very simple right yes this is the complete concept and you can do anything with this technique so now just align the collision layer and mask properly and you will see the result clearly now let's go back to our example here you can clearly see that there is no overlap between the layer and the mask so no collision occur between these nodes great now to make the node x collide with node a we will simply assign the node x collision mask to that of node a and boom there you go that was easy now let's make things little more interesting by adding two more objects node b and node c for simplicity let's again ignore the collision mask of node a b c for a moment now let's assign node a b c to a single layer and that's box 4 now to have the collision of node x with all these nodes we just need to assign the box 4 of collision mask in the node x now let's change the collision layer of node b and c to 2 and 3 respectively this time i only want node x to collide with nodes a and b so what should i do well take a quick guess and the answer is simple we just need to assign the collision mask 4 and 2 but not 3 see it's very easy to understand the concept rather than just making the node x collide with abc remember that each node has a collision mask that defines which objects it can collide with so if i were to define it simply i would say that collision layers are a kind of locks that assign to each respective nodes while collision mask are keys that can interact with these locks all right let's jump back to the visuals now if we want node a to collide with node b but not with node c and x we just need to set its collision mask to match the node b's collision layer similarly node b can now collide with node a because you know node a allows collision with node b and vice versa the same logic applies to all the other nodes as well so hopefully you now have clear understanding of what collision layers and mask and if you have been watching this video till now you might be wondering hey why i made a video while developing my game well in my game i had an arrow in my scene and i wanted the arrow to only collide with the world environment but not with the enemy the issue was that when the arrow collided with the enemy some arrows got deflected from the enemy which looked really bad to fix this i just set the arrow to collide only with the world environment and not with the enemy but wait wait if the arrow doesn't interact with the enemy then how will it damage the enemy the solution was to use a area 3d node as a child of arrow and assign its collision mask to that of enemy collision layer this way only the area 3d node can interact with the enemy while arrow itself doesn't get deflected collision layer and masks really help me to achieve this not just this but collision layers and mask offer several benefits and the first benefit is optimized collision detection yes it helps in preventing unnecessary collision checks which in turn makes your game more efficient and also improving performance the second point is 
precise interaction control. This allows you to define exactly which objects to interact, avoiding the unintended collisions and also ensuring better gameplay mechanics. And the last point is advanced gameplay mechanics. Enable complex interactions such as detecting hits without physical collisions as in my case. So that's it for the video. If you found this video helpful then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more of the content and don't forget to share and always have a great day.